So hello, thank you for joining us in this week's episode of the Healthy Futures podcast. Today, I am joined by James from British Fencing, and we're going to talk all things fencing. So James, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, how are you? How are things? And looking forward to it, really. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Thanks for having me on, Tom. Um, no, problem, no problem at all. Yes, yeah, so... Um, before we do get started then, let's have a little bit of background about you. So what, what your role is at British Fencing and I suppose how you even came about getting involved with fencing really? Yeah, so with British Fencing, I'm coming into, I guess I'm in my sixth year. So I joined in 2015, um, progressed, like the role has kind of progressed in a few different ways um, where it's now head of commercial. I kind of started within the development team um, and before that kind of worked with a larger NGB uh, with Badminton England. Okay. Um, but yeah, I worked across uh, leisure management when I started out in a graduate scheme and uh, and then went into kind of education and now working in sport. Yeah. So you've been at British Fencing for six years and you was at Badminton before that, is that right? I was, yeah. Um, very much with Badminton and, and even now it was more that kind of B2B um, relationship building uh, yeah. stuff. At Badminton it was great because I was able to, the B2B side of things, were working with leisure centres which I kind of knew really well, um, so that kind of made it easier. Um, yeah. And and then British Fencing was really attractive. I, I when I was um, working at GLL, it was one of the things with our kids activity scheme. We had fencing as kind of you know one of these initiatives, just drop and go. Here's some kit. Here's, here's an activator yeah. yeah. uh, in and around 2012, kind of lead up to 2012, and it was an absolute um, you know amazing activity uh, for the young kids. That and something else called resistance sliding, which uh, can tell you about it later. Yeah, that sounds interesting. But, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and roller derbies, or derbies. Um, <laughs> yeah, th- th- those two or three things kind of made a real point of difference for the activity programme. And this was in like East London. Yeah. So I saw I saw how the opportunity it had commercially, but then it was really tough when I was, when I was at the Leisure Centre to kind of, you know, work with Butch Benson. And you only know now kind of gone and going on the inside about how small the team is. You know, we're a really lean team, like even smaller um, when I was you know, in leisure centers. So maybe I didn't have the full appreciation that they didn't pick up my email straight away, but I just, I, I couldn't. So anyway, kind of fast forward, um, I got presented this opportunity to kind of come in and the first six months was really clear. It was to do a review and recommendation on the, the services and products. And I was like, oh, that, that kind of um, is something I'm, it kind of floats my boat um, yeah. from an analytical standpoint. And, you know, I'll have my opinions, gets to, you know, talking to businesses and stuff. I really kind of like that. And then after that, it was pretty much make the job your own. Um, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so we're kind of three years in now to have uh, kind of the start, the fledgings of a commercial department. And, and you know, the, the, obviously the vision is to, to, to make that make us less reliant on, on public money, public investment, uh, certainly the sporting investment that we get. Yeah. Make us, and make ourselves as financially resilient as possible to make sure we reinvest it back into the sport fencing in the UK. So yes. Yeah. It's, so it's, what's the, the, the aim is ultimately to be as close to self-sustainable as, as, as possible, really, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting one because uh, the same, I've, I've been in, in people in the community, outside the community in fencing in the UK saying, James, why don't you go and have a chat with Tesla? Like Tesla was sponsor, you know, <laughs> and electric fencing, electric cars. It's like, yeah, no, absolutely. That's a, that's a good one. That's a good suggestion. There's a synergy <laughs> from a sponsorship perspective. And if there was maybe duplicates of me, you know, that's, that, that takes a long time. It's, um, it's kind of a high risk strategy. And what we're trying to do is look at sustainable income generation. Yeah. And, and the, way we, the way we're doing it right now, um, and, 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 and we kind of, it's kind of narrowed and kind of expanded about what we should do and then narrowed and expanded and narrowed. What we've kind of end up on now when we talk about commercial, commercial stuff at Butch Fenson is it's education and leveraging that as, as best as possible. People come to us for our ed- education and training. Let's make that as good as possible um, and then do some add-on products around that where, where relevant. We've been doing that for, for multiple years, you know, pre-COVID. Everyone's going online right now, but we've yeah. been doing that pre-COVID. And then, and then it's about partnerships and, and licensing. And our licensing program is probably... Uh, the, the one that where we've kind of been able to take ourselves where we have become a lot more sustainable but it's also allowed our partners to be able to reinvest back into their fencing um yeah. delivery i, th- I think it's a, it's probably i mean i think we're going to this a bit later on but yeah. with with fencing i think when i'm working in school specifically i'm always looking for sports or activities that are different to the normal and different to maybe engage them children who aren't necessarily 
I don't I hate doing sport because mm. sport kids love fencing too, but with different ways to engage children and and you know work on the similar you know the same skills but in a different way. And I think fencing mm. is definitely one of them sports that just grab the attention immediately of the class when you bring out a sword yeah. and, and all the equipment that goes with it. I think it's it's great for it's, that. Well. It's a natural, yeah, it's, it's, and it's interesting you say that. I mean, with our primary school resource pack, which we launched last year, it's specifically aimed at kind of two intents, which is building and exploring resilience from, from session one, which you can which you can do. And eventually you get hit, then you have to kind of basically kind of come on guard again. It's called getting you basically fight each other again. It's kind of like, oh, do you see what you just did? Well done. That's called resilient. You just came back on guard. Like, and so you can explore that concept from session one, which is kind of neat. And then that that sporty versus non-sporty thing is absolutely there. And the bit that I've been exploring in the last 18 months and going on a bit of a, a journey is, is, <laughs> is actually school culture. And I don't know if you can kind of talk to this, Tom, but what I see is, um, is sometimes, you know, teachers, there's a bit of a split between sporty and non-sporty teachers. And that can kind of play out um, with the students as well. Um, and I really do hope, you know, certainly stuff that we do and, and, and how we go about it and the, and the training that we have is it's very much about fencing related activities it's kind of yeah. multi-sport game certainly at primary school but with a sword in hand and really we're going it's games-based learning has been around for decades yeah um but it's the execution of that so the, and the actual delivery on that so we've you know with our primary school resource pack it's 36 lesson plans for years one to six all of it it's all kind of thematic learning so again it links in kind of cross-curricular as well so it, it does what you're saying about captures the imagination of the sporty and the non-sporty which yeah. is kind of neat but it, but, it, but it kind of has that step beyond than just the, someone coming in to deliver activity. It has that cross-curricular um, piece to it as well. And I think that's just a really exciting bit that we're exploring. And we've explored it with other projects like Muslim Girls Fence, where we partnered with um, a charity called Maslaha, looking at kind of Islamophobia and social intolerance. And, fence, and, and when you boil that down, it's kind of like, okay, well, where's fencing's kind of distinctiveness in all of this? And it's yeah. about the caption of the imagination. It's about fencing being a catalyst for multiple outcomes. So like, oh, you know, little Johnny or, you know, Susie, not sporty, get some fencing kit in, but then, but then it's the what next. And the what next isn't always to be like a, a fence, an Olympic fencing champion. Yeah. It's, 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 it's maybe little Johnny's going to look at themselves a little different, which is the second intent of the Prime School Resource Pack is self-efficacy, which yeah. is that, you know, self-perception, your self-concepts, how you see yourself doing stuff and, um, and that's just not accurate for a lot of young people and still for a lot of adults. You know, I don't like doing videos on LinkedIn sometimes, but I get a lot of praise for it. And I'm like, really? Are you genuine? <laughs> yeah. um, you know, so I don't have accurate self-awareness. I have self-awareness yeah. and I reflect. But and it's the same with um, how, how, you know, and you'll see it all the time with, you know, you're going into schools. I can't do this. And oh, that negative narrative, you know, being able to use something like fencing, which is innately fun. You can kind of drip feed in lots of positivity, lots of kind of challenging questions that, you know, like, oh, you you know, at the beginning of the session, you didn't want to do it, and you said you weren't sporty. Look at you now. Do you know what, Jay? I couldn't, I could not agree more. And I think for, for PE to be seen in the level that, obviously, you know, we're both involved within PE and sports, so we're almost, you know, the converted really. But I think to 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 convey our passion for PE and the benefits of PE to the class teacher who. Yeah. Because I've no training P, no confidence. It is just that. It's not just children running about a field. It's not just about the physical. And if, if lessons are delivered with just one learning objective to throw and catch, then you're missing out on so much. Like you said there about the resilience, and I think that's such a, a, a really easy way to get across in P. And I think yeah. I've used the analogy before where if you've got a, a child in football or, or whatever you're doing, and they can't kick a ball week one, but mm. week six, they can score a penalty. Yeah. That, that very all of we're simplifying it, that can be used in any yeah. lesson. Okay, yeah. you've got algebra this week. I don't get it. Yeah, but remember last week in football when you couldn't yeah. kick a football and now yeah. you can score a penalty. So actually yeah. that shows if we keep trying in maths or in whatever it is, then we, we will get better. And I think PE is a great subject to show that. And it's great that obviously with the defence and the resource pack is mm. incorporated that cross curricular within yeah. it really because it's so important. Yeah, and, 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 and you clearly get that philosophy and then can deliver upon that. And I think most people can resonate with it. And a lot of school leaders resonate with that and want that to be delivered. And it's from a sector standpoint, it's about elevating it. So being able to provide stuck in the mud, like most people like, <laughs> listen, to, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. But being able to like the, the multi-layered nature of it is one is like physically just getting them to do it, like crowd control, <laughs> behavior <laughs> management, right? Yeah, yeah. And then it's the how skills of, of like being able to drip feed in and make it like 
like specific, if you're doing, doing fencing, like you could do, you know, we use stuck in the mud because tactically it's interesting when you introduce that as a sport. We've, we've done this with one of our partners with an intro session um, to identify talent straight from, from session one. And we saw quite clearly this, some, the intelligence, like with fencing is kind of like physical chess. So those who kind of like, like gaming, again, that's yeah. the, there's a kind of correlation to that with kind of the terms, it's not my language, but it's kind of creators and alternatives out of, out of insight um, kind of talk about. Um, so that's why kind of lots of gamers quite like it, you know, Leagues of Legends or anybody yeah. kind of like strategizing. Um, I think we all do it to a certain degree. Um, it, they really like fencing because they can kind of understand the little nuances uh, and, and, and how it works. Um, so yeah, um, I, I kind of lost my point on that one a little bit, Tom, sorry. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I, 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 I think it's... Um... I, I think it was talking about the layering aspect, wasn't it? About yeah. uh, the stuck in the mud piece. So yeah, so when we introduced stuck in the mud, sorry Tom, I'll just finish off real quick, was um, when, when you're saying what you're doing, it's, it's interesting to see how the group dynamics uh, happen. So those who kind of go to the outer part of the space, they've kind of got, we don't know right now, but probably quite a crude understanding of the tactics of that game. Yeah. Um, and, and, and about because they, the fundamentals in fencing is kind of like you know, I, you, know you, you either get hit or you're trying to not get hit right and mm -hmm. it's distance and timing so distance and timing is a real important thread and what you guys can do for, as deliverers in primary schools and what we're trying to do is teach that like internationally distance and timing is like really really important yeah so how can you do that through games at school so that's why and then that's why you explore and then you kind of layer in kind of like constraints and, and different things like that which coaches know you go through the what skill which is go to us as an ngb and you do it and we pass people but that's just like it's as our um kind of head of coaching and pathways talks about it's kind of like getting your driving test you know you yeah. get your license but then you actually learn how to drive once you go on the road and the motorways and all that stuff so yeah. and it's the same with coaching it's like yes they are fine to go into your school but it you, it's almost kind of like and, and and i think you probably do this but some of our delivers we want to be able to equip them with like yes we've got these session plans but there's underpinning theory behind it as well, like the skill acquisition theory. We use like Bloom's theory, solo taxonomy yeah. theory, because it's really neat, you know? So we talk yeah. about like having no idea. It works for fencing because people like, so when you say fencing, saying, are you coming in like Harris fencing? Are you going to build fences? <laughs> you, get <all> the, <laughs> you get all those jokes. But then it's kind of like, well, so it kind of works with that model. It's got, I've got no idea. Like students have no idea. And then it's kind of like the multi-structural and the abstract thinking at the end of that that continuum is kind of like, right, I, I own it, I've got it. And it's just yeah. kind of a nice, again, thing to have. So it's that, then it's that segue, again, using fencing as a catalyst to say, these are the kids, the whole class is engaged, you know, 10% have got it, you know, 20% got no idea still. <laughs> but, you know. It's, it's always going to happen, in it, no matter yeah, what you do. Yeah, but there's a real depth to it. And I just don't think, um, certainly with some of the government announcements, that, you know, not to get too political, but, it, you know, pubs opening up before sports facilities and stuff like that, you know, early on, it's, it, it's not easy to stand in front of a group of children, one, to get them active, but then two, to be able to layer in that stuff. And But but it provides a great opportunity in an environment to have learning outcomes, which I don't think are always that well recognised. Yeah, definitely. And I suppose having a, that range of learning outcomes as well that go beyond just the physical and what we spoke about there yeah. about the cognitive or whatever it is that, you know, you're linking to that lesson. But I think that's really important as well. And I think it's interesting what you say about the analogy towards the, the driving test and that's so true i mean you you do learn, you need to it's constantly learning it coaching and teaching you're constantly developing and you're constantly finding new ways to do things and i don't think any course and when we run course ourselves no course can prepare you to be stood in front of 30 children to deliver anything and i think getting out there and doing it i think is is just the um mm. there's no substitute for that really I don't, I don't no, know. Yeah, we, yeah exactly and we talk about it all the time it's the what and the how skills yeah and, and, and we're talking about like some of the sharing that we can do within the community space. So like uh, what we call a core coach who like someone like yourself would get trained up in and go into a school or like PGL or center parks, they're trained, their what skill is core coach level, which is a precursor to level one. But then it's about learning from them as well. And we try to take that stance of, of like, like, you know, when they do a game, we do a like a technical thing. So we have this model, which you said about giving an appreciation. We have this appreciation, tactical and technical model. So yep. always kind of lead them with the appreciation, which you're, what you're kind of you we're talking about. If you do that, then you can have that kind of cross curricular conversation as well. Yeah. So you kind of give them the because they've got an appreciation of what they're doing and how they're doing it, why they're doing it, 
and then they can apply that into different... Uh, I think that's really important areas. as well about giving context to the cross curricular. I think sometimes when now it can come across a bit forced and sometimes when you try to force cross curricular in there, but I think, mm. like I said, there, giving a bit of context towards it, yeah. it really benefits the children as well. Yeah, in the, yeah, yeah, I think so. But it, 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 sometimes you, you, I think sports people can sound a bit like, oh, we're just trying to position this because we're trying to tap into some other money and not the yeah, school yeah. sports premium. But it, the evidence is there, you know, and, and this is what I was talking about with the teachers and the disconnect of sporty versus non-sporty. If you actually had, and stereotypically talking, because it's not always obviously like this, you have a, a PE guy who's actually the maths teacher as well or the maths lead. But if you had the PE lead and the maths lead come together and properly look at each other's lesson plans and the content, I bet there's so many synergies it certainly is with fencing you know we talk about you know uh you know king king arthur for instance is one of our themes you know how much does that link in to kind of like you know history and english literature and, and english language um so yeah definitely, is, definitely. and I, I think the, the idea of physical activity and needs to be a whole school approach it can't just be yeah. too often pe is out there and it's on as its own subject it's there's not many attempts to link it back into topic or link it into other aspects and you know, often there's a there's a school ethos and there's a PE ethos almost, and and mm. that, I completely agree they need to be to be merged into one. And can physical activity be introduced into math, into English, or yeah. whatever that might be? And then, like say, can it what we're doing in PE link back into whatever we're learning in the classroom? And I think that's the way PE as a general has got yeah. to go in the future, really. Well, I, I, absolutely, and one of the good examples I heard through, um, and they can never endorse it, but as an Austin inspector, they they went into the school, and one of the really good kind of um, you know case studies was that this PE lead got all basically all adults in this school to do at least some sort of CPD and training within sport and physical activity. Yeah. So they all felt competent and confident, and they'll be in different journeys of that. You know, as as we know, um, yeah. but they all had an experience, so kind of made play purposeful. And I see it all the time now, kind of going, you know, picking up my son at school, and you know, they're just kind of running free. But yeah, you know, that's fine. You know, that's one end of the continuum. But like, if everyone had that little extra bit of training, that's why we've got this kind of twenty pound kind of little CPD course that allows yeah. people just to dip in, have a go, feel confident, confident to use our like free downloadable app plug um and but, <laughs> but, in there. <laughs> but get that one in there tom you know we don't have a marketing department we don't have a big marketing budget i told you we're lean we're lean so um but that, but that's the intent that's the, that's the reason it's yeah this, this case study just was like this pe lead was like you know what how do i do the change management how do i have that whole school approach as you said tom and it's and it's just finding that level of like a bare minimum of training that everybody can engage in which i thought was like a really good thing to try definitely to get. and it comes back to the i think you mentioned there about confidence don't you? and it just comes back to that it comes back to the fact that teachers are, are not necessarily getting as much training within their initial teacher trainers they should be getting of yeah. around pe you know if they're getting four hours of training yeah. PE, that says what they need to know about a subject it don't really matter so then they go into that ethos on the matter of had poor experiences in their own school life so then that carries on yeah and i think you know ultimately teachers can teach obviously they've got qts yeah. So, but yeah. you know we our job really is just to I suppose I, th and I say to teach all the time I think you would see in the classroom unbelievable teacher and they go out into the playground into PE yeah. and it's like it's a completely alien different subject and actually it's it, oh, teaching you know you're still working with children that the, yeah. the, the, the examples of making progress and behavior mind are all still the same mm -hmm. or similar and I think sometimes teachers just need to be confident really in their own mm -hmm. ability that actually you know I can teach and this is the way we do it really, I suppose. Question for you: Do you think coaches and what do you do as a bit like not to put you on the spot, but Go do on. you try to have those conversations with teachers about what they're trying to learn in the classroom to bring that outside so in your session? So, like, obviously, EYFS is like trying to like foundation. They're trying to be secure in numbers one to twenty. Yeah. So, like, are you aware of that when you're playing a game and you you know do you have twenty cones instead of just whatever many? <laughs> I think, especially within the early years, I like to get as much cross curricular. I think the early years is the easiest way. Example, like I say, you okay. know, one to twenty colours and 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 yeah. animals and things like that. And I think with early years, the using the creativity of the children, that their imagination is unbelievable. Yeah. And yeah. just from an engagement point of view, of engaging the children into the lesson by you know a cone can be a planet, a cone can be yeah. an animal you know, and they're yeah. capable of doing that. And then linking that back into what's going on in the classroom in terms of counting and animals yeah. or whatever it might be they're learning that week. I think we should be doing really as, as yeah. we're going into schools. But yeah, uh, it's, it's really neat to see that we talk about that, like, you know, that peer-to-peer -peer learning and actually the coach is the facilitator. Yeah. 
so some of our content some people have said oh that's where's all the detail to it and it's like well the kids will will flesh it out yeah. you know we'll, we'll give a game you know like sand and sea is a game but you you introduce that to a kid the sand is woods and the sea is i don't know fire and they're just the the, the, the iterations of that game it's just kind of endless and yeah. uh that's, that's a really cool thing to see yeah no i, I agree and i think going to the cross curricular side and we had a conversation a, a bit ago with a, with a, a dance company and they're really, really big on on using what's going on in the topic to deliver their dance lesson. Obviously, dance is traditionally delivered where I'm at the front and I'm doing dance moves and the children copies, whereas mm. they go to schools and they will link it to the topic. So if they're doing the Romans, then they'll use the Romans as like the, the, the focus of that lesson. So they'll create a dance around the Romans. Yeah. And I think that's a really nice way of really linking cool. it all together and bringing, like we said at the start, bringing it all I can see that. I can visualize that. I can see a bunch of kids being centurions and like yeah, shirts, yeah. you know. Yeah, you can link for fencing, I suppose, a little bit. But uh, yeah, let's yeah, link me up to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will do. Yeah, definitely. Now I think that's really interesting, and I love the way that it's all set up to to be cross curricular and to work on and to introduce different different aspects into the into the lesson. Yeah. So I suppose in a in a primary school setting, then obviously I'm sure people listening there thinking fencing. With a sword, with a with a metal. So, how is it adapted to a, to met opposite within a primary school? What's what's that look like? The primary school resource pack doesn't have any metal. Um, it's done within foam and plastic. Um, I think one of the other clear things within school is to show the differentiation between the different year groups. You got to you know, it doesn't look like you're just doing the same thing with all year groups. Um, yeah. So, you know, year one and two, um, it's short foam swords, little sabers they're called. Um, we've got three Olympic weapons. So, um, one of them is called a saber. So, we've got little foam sabers year three and four and again it's not a linear journey like you don't have like you can use the year one content and sessions in year six yeah <laughs> you know, yeah uh, you know it's i think that's really important that those yeah. but i think sometimes when i see schemes of work and i think year three athletics but i think hold on the school down the road i could go do that year three athletics yeah. with but the school a mile down from that they need year one and i think yeah. that, that's yeah. really important i think within the yeah. planning yeah, but, and so we've got to kind of caveat that. So it's, um, but this, you know, what we try to do is standardize it. So previously there wasn't any standardization you go into a course and we didn't necessarily have like the games or the content. So sometimes when I first joined, it was like, yeah, the kind of course is kind of okay, right? Which yeah. is okay, we need to improve that. But then it's a bit, well, we really need a bit more support about the onward delivery. And for me, that's really important. One is ethically from a participation standpoint, making the, the, that kind of end product as good as it can be. But then also being able to influence, like for instance, yourself as a deliverer, because yeah. all of it, like your house skills, a degree, degree of separation will, you know, maybe previously it was like that. It's like a right angle, <laughs> do yeah. the course. And then it's like, you know, do Tom does what he does, which is yeah. kind of cool. But at the end of the day, you might have inspired one or two kids who then go to a fencing club and they've had lots of fun, but the, the, the technicals are like, you know, um, are not, you know, as good or, or what they maybe should have been. So they, then feel like oh what have I learned is you know it, it's, it's too it's too separated it's kind yeah, of not yeah. not what it is you kind of inspired them which is great <laughs> and got them to a club um, but then they're not really looking like a fencer which is again another thing from our community which we're trying to do around understanding from a club perspective they might not be able to just stand like a fencer straight away but hey you know what they've got over the, the you know all those participation barriers but actually turning up having the confidence the fear of judgment they're there which which is a bit more of a slower change um but yeah no the fencing um as i say it's like foam and plastic and again you just kind of uh, wheel and deal it as, as as you see fit with the people in front of you it all links up, up into our um, british fencing achievement awards so yeah. the first year is one to three are, are aligned for those age ranges and with something called the mini mini swords award so that kind of the agility balance coordination although interesting we kind of go with balance first instead of agility because it's you know the whole thing with a baby like was it two thirds or third i can't remember now <laughs> uh, my colleague's gonna laugh at me when watching this um, but basically <laughs> kind of like you know you have to kind of control your head like the weight of that so we think balance is actually a lead thing so you know there's a real depth of thinking that we have uh, behind it but that's kind of years one to three and then years um four five six link into that bronze silver gold achievement awards called go fence which um which some people might have heard uh, watching this if they've been around in the industry yeah. for a while um, it was kind of a, a lead program in 2010 um so we've kind of stayed with that name but just with the achievement awards um, that's nice that's uh, nice little, uh, achievement for children so they're working towards something as well and i think that's uh, a nice little added on to uh, yeah well it's the, 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 yeah again so as you know like you know with that kind of new offset framework what was it last year it came into place was it yeah um 
you know, a school teachers got to be able to, a school leaders got to, oh, they come in, you know, what, why, have you, why have you brought them in, you know, to your school? What's the intent behind bringing in? And that's where we're saying cross-curricular for, for fencing. You kind of almost kind of not look at us as an NGB yeah. or as a sport provider. Like if your objective is to build resilience in your pupils, you know, try to work on this concept of persistence or self-efficacy, challenge the sporty, non-sporty, then come to us. And it just so happens that it's the vehicle to do to, to achieve those outcomes is fencing. Yeah. And that's the kind of conversation I'm having. So I don't really kind of talk like fencing and sport. It's kind of like, well, if your objective is to do X and Y intent, then that's where we want to have the conversation. So we're trying to be really clear on that. It does a multitude of different other things, but we're saying with this, these 36 lesson plans because of the thematic learning approach it takes and, and all that stuff, those are the intents. And then the implementation are the, the you know, each 36 lesson plans have clear outcomes. Um, we've used kind of like the AFP stuff that they talk about with the step principle um, and the progressions, you know, within that. I think you've done a, I saw one of your videos about the step principle. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So yeah. there you go. Uh, you, got one, you got more than one. Yeah, it's one all now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and, uh, and then obviously, you know, the impact on it, again, Ofsted, it's, there's, a, there's a focus away from just data, data, data. I know schools still want that. Because yeah. it's a bit of a legacy thing has been around there for so long. Um, but Austin actually want to kind of do more of those deep dive conversations and, and you know, for, for school leaders to be able to kind of evidence that. And that's why we have that link into that skip skill acquisition theory and everyone gets a badge and certificate. It has an outcome, it has an impact out of it as well. So we've been able to address, you know, each three um, intent implementation impacts um, really well. And, and, we've, and we've tested it in industry as well. Um, with one of our, uh, we, we did a joint venture with a multi-sport provider called Multi-Sport Pro. Yeah. Um, I think you might have heard of. Um, is, is that uh... Stuart, Stuart, Stuart King and Simon Moe, we do a shout out to them. They're, they're <laughs> amazing guys. They're, they've actually uh, now converted into a premier franchise, which is an organization that we work with as well. Yeah. Um, allowing them to, to, one of the license uh, options that we have is with, with premier Kind of premier sport. I don't know sometimes what to call it. I think it's just premier now. <laughs> but they're, 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 that, they're that big out there. That massive. They're, they're that big. Yeah, yeah. I can't tell what they want at the moment. Yeah. No. So um, we we allow we allow um, their commercial arm, their training arm, um, train with premier to um to to do um, our in house training license products. So we have a connection with them. So we're going to carry on working with Simon and, and Stuart in in that vein for kind of you know training up their staff. But they they tested all of the content and developed. Um, gave us the feedback about differentiation, gave us the feedback, um, you know, which we just then adapted to. Um, but it went through, you know, 1,500 children, 30 schools. Um, yeah. So, and that's what I really like about, you know, working at Butch Benson is, yes, it's fast paced, but um, the way we develop products is very much about co-design. It's not yeah. kind of like two years, send it to an agency. And then, you know, certainly with youth, you know, all the youth trends out there, anybody listening kind of realise like in, in six months time, it'll be something different, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. I think that's, that's really important though from what I'm getting from that though is buying into the package or whatever the services that that, that is. It's, yeah. it's tried and tested as well. I think that's so important. I mean, to know that it's been gone through testing, it's been tried in other schools and I think that's yeah. what, what schools want really is what's worked down there, what's worked in that yeah. school, what can I implement in my school that yeah. could my children. I think having that case study and having that that level of, of scrutiny beforehand is is really important as well. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And that's obviously that one end of the spectrum. Yeah. And it's, it's to your point, there's be a bunch of people hopefully saying, oh yeah, fencing sounds interesting. And, and so that's kind of like a whole school approach. Um, and then we've got underneath that, we've got kind of our um, core coach course, which used to be two days face-to-face. We've now got this online, which I'm pleased to kind of announce on uh, Monday the 19th of October we're obviously doing it on um, 16th of October filming this but um, Monday the 19th is um, for £20 they can just do a standalone CPD module which is kind of some of the modules of our two day um, course yeah. but we've got that, we've got 75% of that course online so the bottom end of the spectrum is do that CPD thing for £20 you know what I, you know, hopefully it's kind of a, almost a bit of a distressed purchase, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the kind of thing it was a, from a school teacher is like, I really need to try to, you know, try something different. Um, so so that's what, 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 what does that cost? It, what's the, the aim of that cost? So to become confident, competent to use the Explore Fencing app. So you get, you, the, the Explore Fencing app is free to download right now. You just search for Explore Fencing, people can download it. You can see some free games, which we're going to develop. There's kind of um, some intro movement skills called yeah. basic moves. And then there's, 
Control the Mask and Step Lunge. And Step Lunge is our favorite. Got to try that one. <laughs> and, then, and then also on the app, there's kind of two, two, two sections, the free games, which I just said, and then a coach access. So off the back of this CPD, what we call stage one, because there's three, three stages of part of the whole online course. Stage one, we packaged up just on its own to, to access, to become confident and competent to use the app. Um, you also get preferential rates on foam and plastic equipment for two years as well. And it's basically a, a, just a try before you buy approach. Yeah. Um, if you've done stage one, it's a precursor to the full online course, but it also allows you to look at like session design, you know, looking at different uh, uh, types of um, delivery, you know, whole part whole or traditional models. Um, yeah. it, it kind of breaks down the philosophy of what we're trying to impart um, around the kind of game, game based learning. Um, and it's more about looking at your house skills and coaching philosophy. I suppose it helps break down that barrier as well, don't it? Because it is fencing and, and the, you use using equipment and, you know... It, it well, the free game... The fr yeah, well, it is. And, the, and, and it is absolutely... Like, just, I, have, I didn't say it, though, because you, you mentioned it and I didn't say it. But the free games, um, you don't need any. So you'll see that there's no sword needed, no mask. You don't need any nothing. equipment, so you can go yeah. and you can introduce fencing. Yeah, I think well, that's, that's yeah. great. So, that, so, so if, if nothing else, no money... Just download the app and try those two games That's and play around tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and as I say, with the lead up to Tokyo 2021, we're going to be doing a lot more um, content generation, um, look, looking at potential like, other sports clubs. Anybody want to, you know, collaborate out there? Um, we're, going to, we're going to do some stuff with Centre Parks and do a Centre Parks game. Um, so in the next, you know, in the lead up to Tokyo 21, 2021, we're going to be, you know, um, Keep, keep releasing more and more yeah. games as, as they go on. And if and if people don't enjoy the games, then we just say, just reach out to us. And if you've got a better idea, let's let's capture it and let's collaborate. Definitely. I mean, like I say, I think collaboration in this industry is just so important because, you know, working with other people. But I suppose slightly different to what we've been talking about now, but and I've only just thought about this really, but how has the, the, the Olympics been delayed affected you guys really? How, what, what, what was... What, oh, what yeah, was the... good question, mate. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> how, how long have we got? <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. I think for a lot of national government bodies, I mean, one of the main purposes is is to send, you know, for Olympic sports anyway, is to send, uh, you know, they're, they're the kind of the selectors to then, you know, send them off over to Team GB to then go to the Olympics, right? Um, so in, in real terms, we don't know from an international fencing perspective when international competitions and the qualifiers, like we we're going to just go into the qualifiers and um and the different kind of zonal competitions that have that help with the qualification we've got uh, certainly one fence which is kind of quite interesting to follow marcus mepstead um about his uh, olympic journey he got a, a silver at the world championships last year as well as a you know a few other obviously fences to kind of watch out for so we were you know legitimately looking to kind of send you know some athletes to to tokyo 2020 um, and the delay you know it's, it, it's, it's affected everybody's kind of you know um the way they've kind of periodized their, their 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 years their training plans you know you think about marcus he was all kind of training up and getting prepared and doing everything he needed to just peak for performance when he needed to so you know it's it's obviously been an, an immense challenge for, for all athletes um yeah i can imagine that i was, I was talking to some of the day i think obviously there's, there's loads yeah. of problems going on in the world at the moment but everyone's probably relative to them but a, yeah. you know, an athlete who's trained for an entire year and put their entire year on hold and, and the sacrifice they've made yeah. to then have to do that again. Like I said, there's other issues going on in the world that I'm not saying, you know, but I think that must be really hard and really, really tricky for the for, yeah. for people. And other, so the men, the defense yeah. you mentioned there, Marcus, is he full-time? Is that his full-time job or is he, is he doing this? Is he funded? No, he, well, he's he has part sponsorship here and there. He's got... Um, you know, pre, last last year, obviously pre-COVID, there was um, funding that we get from um, that we help obviously distribute to our athletes um, called the Aspiration Fund with UK Sport, which obviously the athletes and British are really grateful for. Um, we, we had a world-class program previously, um, previous to, like you know around London 2012 and and going into Rio 2016. But obviously after Rio 2016, we will uh, one of a handful of sports that got all of our funding taken away, so we don't have any world-class program set up which, which is a real shame because we've got an amazing facility um down in london uh, which isn't fully utilized um and and everybody has you know we've got an olympic team manager uh, johnny davis who does a great job of you know keeping track of everyone's journeys and and supporting them for their yeah. you know for their international olympic you know um you know uh, 
journey, but um, yeah. their, their pathway. But yeah, no, in, in reference to, to Marcus, he's, he's a personal trainer. He, you know, he, he's working hard. He, he lives out in Brooklyn in, in New York, USA. So, you know, he's, he's, he's hustling as, 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 but as well as making sure that he, uh, he has the right, you yeah. know, he has the right time. He puts in the time of, of someone who's like a paid athlete. Um, yeah. But he doesn't, you know, there's, and, you know, there's obviously just an additional stress for, for, for like athletes like, like Marcus, because you've got that just even just subconscious. And I'm just talking from a, what I, what I would assume he hasn't said yeah. this, but you know, <laughs> you know, if you, if you don't know in two years time or one year's time, you know, if you're going to be secure with funding or you're training and you have to worry about that financially, then it, it's, um, it's, it's certainly not going to help to have the best performance environment. Yeah, it, it, it's not good to have that lingering over. Is it? it can't that can't be a positive with, with whatever way you look at it. But no, I think it's a. Uh, hopefully, it goes ahead next year, and hopefully, it's yeah. all back to some form of normality <laughs> across the world. Really, I suppose. Yeah. But yeah, it's one of the things that I suppose with everything going on in the world, you get caught up, and you think, oh, actually, yeah, Olympics have been postponed, sort of thing. Yeah. Obviously, with you guys being, you know, more yeah. involved than I am, but yeah, yeah, yeah just interesting yeah. to see. Yeah, and seventy-five percent of our membership are complete members, so we're we're doing everything we can. Um, behind the scenes to make sure that we put on some sort of event schedule as best as we can. Yeah. We've got multiple multiple um, ideas and plans uh, that we're trying to bring to life um, because we know how important it is. We really value our members who create the community in the UK, um, and, and we obviously want to, you know, do do as best as we can to make sure that you know from that beginner to an elite fencer can yeah. they can get out there and compete. Yeah, I, I don't know about you, James, but I think it's forced businesses and everyone to be creative with the way they do things as well. And yeah. you know, you've got all these restrictions and all these guidelines you've got to follow. You've got to be creative in the way you're doing things. And hopefully things will, will you know, will take things from this period of time that will actually improve the sport and the business within going forward in the future. I mean, the online course, for example. Must yeah, well, yeah, like, we've got athlete development programs. So we've got like, I think, like 120, 150 athletes and like on a week, I think it's happening this weekend where, and it's happened previously, but 150 athletes, different locations, having like group Zoom sessions, individual Zoom sessions. It's, <laughs> it seems an absolute minefield, but um, yeah. we, we've developed it. But it's, again, there's, there's real positives, you know, um, even even when you're an aspiring athlete, for instance, you take the example of a bit of fear judgment, you know, you better just practice, you have that one-on-one -on -one time in, in, in your own space on Zoom or what, what have you, it's going to be, it's going to be good, but it doesn't really take away, certainly from a contact sport, like, you know, like ours, you've got to have, I think people are just wanting to kind of get back and have that contact. Yeah. They feel like they're maybe missing that kind of, um, that ability to kind of just, you know, deliver and perform these movements. You can yeah. perform all the movements as much as you want, but you just got to, you want to get out there, get out there and have a little. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not the same, is it? If no. only we all had shares in Zoom in February with uh... a, <laughs> <laughs> but, we'll uh, be here, we would be in no, uh, <laughs> our, our equipment supply i have to say um uh, one of our equipment suppliers leon paul with the create like uh, just so quickly these face coverings and these face masks yeah um so there's definitely there's definitely ways around it and uh but yeah we're having to kind of constantly obviously update our, uh, our guidelines on on ratios and whatnot but yeah club fencing can happen we've got if you go to our website on, on the left hand side on our, on our menu, you can see like a whole COVID 19 section. So, um, yeah, there's a whole host so of So, fencing can still that. continue given fences, that. Yeah, yeah, fencing still continues. It was, it was great. One of our partner centre parks has said that's come, they've put it back onto their activity schedule. Uh, fencing clubs are happening. You know, we just put, there's always a solution over it. And we've just been working hard behind the scenes to make sure that we deliver upon those kind of mitigating actions from a risk management standpoint. So, yeah. You know, if you want to do fencing, you got to have a COVID officer, you know, and, and, and all that stuff and have a risk assessment and, and, and all of that stuff. But we've got all the resources. It, it was super proud to see. I, haven't, I, I didn't really have to do much of the work. <laughs> but, um, but our chief exec, as well as our club lead and our media, media lead, which is, you know, let's really just go to, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. If you went to that section, you'd probably uh, you'd be amazed by how much stuff you can see about the guidance yeah. To, yeah. to have a return to fencing. No, that's that's great. So, I mean, ju just to finish off, then I think we've mentioned it a few times, but for anyone who wants to get involved with fencing, yeah, uh, they've listened to this thing, love to get involved either coach or school. What are some of the options they can do? Where can they go to to take their learning, I suppose, further? What's the best route for them? Well, hopefully, I can send a little bit of information you can put in the kind of like the comments below. Of course, we can. Um, yeah, we can put any links, any links to to get yeah. people involved. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, just just to have a look. You know, the free one is just download the app um after that is that little cpd module for 20 quid um and then and then thereafter within covid um we can take take people through that online online course 
um, which ends, there was a face-to-face element of it, which is a four-day assessment, oh, sorry, four-hour, not four-day, um, a four-hour <laughs> assessment. Off now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but see you later. <laughs> Everyone's clicked off. Come back, come back. Um, so, so yeah, there's multiple different options, um, which, like, you know, hopefully, again, from, like, just no equipment, um, you know, uh, no swords, anything like that. Yeah. Um, with the app kind of just gets you an idea about some of the games that you can play and just test the waters download it show it to your kids after school club wraparound club yeah. think does this look good yeah maybe no but try it you know and sit, yeah. test the waters so hopefully that's a bit of value that we can kind of give for free to challenge that perception of like oh yeah I'm not even going to look at fencing because x y and z it's like well yeah. we're taking that away so there's kind of no excuse to that so download that have a look at that and if that piques your interest um then you know check out the comments below and i think we're going to do a special offer uh, with comments below and i think you said you've got a newsletter where we'll, yeah. we'll, put, we'll put a discount code especially for you yeah yeah definitely so we'll, we'll have some discounts for people who want to get involved who, who yeah. can take, take it further and start to get involved in fencing i mean i think you mentioned leon paul and i bought some of their equipment from okay from, um, to, to do it in my school and i think the, the kids yeah. just absolutely loved it i mean we did it in our school club and just the engagement was so this was pre-covid was was so high yeah. it was yeah Something different, and like I say, it's we're always looking for that ways to engage children in, in aspects outside of the norm, I suppose. And I think yeah. it's a great way to do that. So yeah, I encourage everyone to download the app, get involved, and and see if it's for you. Because I'm sure you'll you'll be pleasantly, you know, surprised, <laughs> get rid of all the misconceptions that you might have. So sure. yeah, we'll, we'll, put in, we'll put that in the comments, and people can people can go further. But really appreciate your time today, James. Really enjoyed that. Good to find out a bit about fencing in general as well, and 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 find out a bit more from my side of you. So yeah, thank you for your time. Good, no worries. Thanks. Thanks for having me again. No problem whatsoever.